Hey everybody. So after a bunch of Ableton Live uh, videos, I'm coming at you with some Mac stuff. So if you've seen my bouncing ball rhythms video, then you know that if we take a phaser and then we curve it so that it's, let's say, exponential or logarithmic, then we can get these like bouncing ball type of rhythms. And similarly, if we just modulate the slope of a phaser in any way, then we can get different, and then subdivide it, then we can get different intervals of time between the events that we create after subdivision. Um, so I had this thought of, well, I know that I can modulate a phaser and get out this varying stream of pulses, but I was wondering if you could actually do the opposite where you feed in the stream of pulses to create the phaser whose slope changes. Uh, and that would be a little bit like tap tempo because with tap tempo, you're basically tapping and that's from those taps are derived a BPM that your DAW or whatever is using. So I was thinking, well, it'd be cool if during sort of a window of time, uh, you, the computer would record your taps and the distance between those taps. And then from that, get this phaser that sort of represents the like feel of time or the groove that you were creating by through that tapping. Um, so I made that patch and I want to show you. And this is kind of like a two part video. In the first part, I'll just show you the patch. Uh, which will be useful to anybody who's a Rhythm and Time Toolkit user because you could just grab this gen patch and hopefully it will just work if you connect it in the way that I have it here. Uh, or if you're a gen person, we will talk about the gen at the end. Okay. So basically what I'm going to do is click this button over here. That's going to start recording. Actually, recording is not going to start until this phaser. That's kind of the main source of time in the patch. When it restarts its ramp, we will start recording taps of this button, this big one. And then after that's done, then we will hear the result. Okay, so I'm going to start the recording and you'll hear like this, this kind of sound when the recording starts. So, and then I just put a bunch of taps in and you can see that where I tapped more quickly, the resulting phaser, which is here is steeper. Try that again, see what happens. And here we're doing a subdivision of 16. I don't even know how many taps I did, right? The number of tap, the taps that I do basically just create a phaser who has this sort of um, piecemeal slope. And then we can subdivide that, you know, however we want to, we could pick whatever we want. Right, because it's just going off this like feeling of the flow of time. Let me go back to 16, it's kind of annoying. Uh, that, that we chose. So, uh, yeah, that's basically that. Uh, one thing that I did add to this patch was uh, this kind of auto mode that lets you train the groove thing with um, a phaser that's derived from the input phaser. So if this twist is set to zero, uh, then what that means is that this phaser and pulses that come from it are going to actually train our um, our groove algorithm. 
And uh, if I have this set to zero, then this is linear. So when I train this, we should just get standard straight timing. So now we're training. Now we're done training. And so as you can see, it's straight as a board. If I twist this, now we're training with this twisted clock. Now you can see we're getting out a twisted clock because we've actually like generated one not from twist in this at this point but actually from an analysis of the amount of time in between pulses that a phaser that was twisted created so that's that if you're an rtt user you could totally just insert this basically wherever uh between your clock your rtt.clock or whatever and the rest of your patch and then you just have to send this record start pulse to the right inlet and this taps pulse to the leftmost inlet. Um, but let's go into the gen. So I will try to keep this mostly architectural. So we have three inputs. The first one is the tap tempo pulses. The second one is the phaser that is the sort of main source of time. And then the third one is a pulse that uh, will start the recording. So the main phaser comes in, we're going to get its slope. And from that, we can derive a pulse when this phaser starts slash stops, when a new cycle starts, basically. And when we get a pulse from the third inlet, we don't actually immediately trigger the recording. What we do instead is wait for the next pulse uh, from the input phaser. And at that point, the recording starts. So this green patch cords is just carrying a zero or a one that says, are we currently recording or not? So when we start the recording, uh, what we're going to do is um, each time there's a new pulse, we're going to say what's here. We'll say basically what's the current phase, what's the current value of the input phaser. And we'll take that minus the previous one. and. Uh, and um, and store that in a buffer. So we're basically saying what was the amount of time, not in like milliseconds or samples or anything, but actually in phase between this pulse and the last one. And we'll put that into this buffer called phases. And we will store those that value for each pulse that we get. So we have this pulse counter or this tap counter that's basically keeping track of how many taps we've had so that we're storing that phase difference from one tap to the next in the correct slot in the buffer. And that buffer is called phases, and it's defined down here using a data object. Um, over here, uh, we are just keeping track of what's the, what's the total number of taps, because we're going to need that in this section of the patch, which is kind of for playback. So everything up here, pretty much, has to do with recording and sort of like training the algorithm. Down here, this is where we actually get into playback. And basically what we do is we look up um, for using the peak object, we just look up what the phase difference was for that section of the uh, of the of the ramp and convert that into a slope that is relative to whatever the input phaser's current tempo speed is. So what's interesting about this is like you could record your groove at a slower or faster BPM or tempo or frequency or whatever you want to call it, then you actually play back. Like you could change the, once the playback starts, you could change the speed of the input phaser and this thing will actually respond maintaining that same groove relative to that clock that you're sending in. Um, because when we calculate this kind of output slope, we're calculating it as some uh, scalar 
difference relative to the input uh, phasor's slope. And then we just accumulate that and send it out. Um, that's all that I'll talk about as far as the gen patch. If you have questions about the patching, then uh, join the Discord and ask away. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are liking these and you have not subscribed, please do that. And I'll see you next time.